An update now, a 12-year-old girl at the center of an Amber Alert has been found safe. Emily Hughes was missing for more than a week. 27-year-old Sir Terion Preston has been arrested and is expected to face charges connected to her disappearance. Investigators believe the two may have met on a dating app called Tagged. Mm. So this story really serves as a reminder that there are a lot of dangerous apps available for everybody, especially kids. Mm -hmm. And there are some ways that they can actually hide these apps from their parents. Tatiana Jordan is the chief parent officer of Bark Technologies, an online safety company that helps keep kids safe online. Joining us live now. Good morning. Thanks for joining us here on Houston's Morning Show. What can you tell us about this tagged dating app and how could a 12 year old have access to it in the first place? Yeah, the tag dating app is, uh, as according to its storefront on the app stores, the number one place for you to vibe with new people and yeah. match with singles, meet dates. So clearly not a place for a 12, 13, 14 year old. Um, the problem with this app and any app is that children can easily sign up for any app in the app store, the Google Play Store. All they have to do is lie about their age if the app is age gating. Some apps don't. Mm. So I know you were referencing other apps. What are some of the most dangerous? We, we know the common apps, mm -hmm. the, the common dating apps, the Hinge and, and, and Tinder. What are the most right. dangerous ones that parents need to keep in mind? The app that was most alarming to us per our annual report uh, was Kick. So if you see that your child is requesting to download Kick or already has Kick, please get rid of it immediately. It is a cesspool. And then there's other apps that children ask for and you might think are harmless, like Snapchat, for example. And you might think, oh, it's just kids wanting to send disappearing photos which is problematic in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, but Snapchat also has Snap Maps, which can share your child's real-time location with anyone they're connected to, in addition to a chatbot that they introduced. And honestly, you can have drugs delivered to your home uh, within, within minutes um, and without even knowing it, again, because of Snapchat. Mm, that is so disturbing. Now, we know that there are ways that teens can camouflage apps. They can rename them, they can change the logo. So the ones that you mentioned, you might not even be able to see if you're just glancing at their phone. So what are some ways that, that we, especially as parents, can keep ahead of all this technology? I'm so glad you asked. Um, first of all, take a deep breath because it can be very overwhelming. Uh, next is whether you're an Apple family or a Google family, make sure that you have app request approval turned on so that anytime your child wants to download an app, you get a heads up about it, you can look into it, and you can either approve it or deny it. And then if uh, you're past that point and your kid has already been able to download any app, make sure you go into uh, their history so you can see what apps have been downloaded. Um, it does take a little bit of work on the front end, but it's, it's critical to our children's safety. And I know there's like the, 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 the paid parental controls where you can specifically control. I mean, you can do this on TVs and everything else to control exactly what they're downloading, downloading and what they're looking at. Yeah, so Apple and Google have free built-in parental controls when it comes to managing screen time and, and limiting or uh, giving children the ability to download apps. But then there's also apps like Bark that will give you that ability plus proactively alert you when your children have encountered dangers mm -hmm. like predators, like risky apps, like cyberbullying, like sexual content. Um, Bark will go above and beyond to, to send you those alerts and then give you best recommended next steps on how to address. I hang out with a lot of teens at my house and I feel like they all think that they're safe and, and they sort of feel like, you know, we're blowing it out of control. So what are the right words to do to really talk to your kiddos about this? Make sure they know that it could really be problematic. It's such a great question, right? Because we're trying to build our relationship with each other, not cause further friction. <clears throat> As a mom of a teen, I know this acutely. You know, they dearly don't want to talk to you and they don't want to hang out with you. That said, it is your job as the parent to keep your kids safe, not only in real life with seat belts and sunscreen, but also online. And so if you're not overbearing, uh, if you're not picking up their phone and going through it every day all the time, uh, but you use a parental control tool like Bark to send you alerts when there are dangers, but then have meaningful conversations afterwards, um, it, it goes a long way in helping them to realize it's not that you don't trust mm -hmm. them, 